guys, Julesy here, and on today's video, we are going to be discussing if it's possible for Black Americans to appropriate African culture. <laughs> so recently, a young lady, and I promise I'm not trying to butcher her name, it's actually, visually, it's a very pretty name, I feel like it's Zipora, I might be pronouncing it wrong, wrote a blog post for the people section of medium.com, which is basically like, I think it's an online magazine published via Medium, targeted at black people accused and asked that black Americans stop appropriating African culture because after clicking through pictures of this year's Afro punk she just felt like black Americans are culturally unaware and or ignorant of the African culture that they are appropriating when they are wearing the tribal markings on their face but first let me get ready for this video <clears throat> I'm ready now let me simply ask what is African. Africa is a continent of 54 countries, at least 54 countries recognized by the United Nations. And do all the countries even like each other? Do all the countries have similar cultures? Like, can we even get into the number of ethnic groups that exist on the continent of Africa and whether or not they actually like each other, whether or not they are all very culturally similar. With a very broad and general term, what Sephora is really targeting as African culture is really more specifically West African culture. And I think even before we get into the meat of what her, how our article is divisive and a lack of understanding of culture and history at large, is that I find it rather inappropriate for West Africans to think that their culture is the culture of Africa at large in general, when Africa is a vast land of many ethnicities and cultures. Zipora, also, she's Black British, and I question severely if she's ever been to the United States. Has she ever been to New York City? Because for her to click through Afropunk pictures and find that black Americans are appropriating this mystic African culture with the white tribal markings, which I saw there was plenty of people at Afropunk with face paint on, makeup on their face, with white dots down the nose and above the eyebrow bridge. Factual, as somebody who lived in Brooklyn, New York for eight years, one third of blacks in New York City are immigrants. That's not even counting second and third generation from the Caribbean and Africa who still hold strong cultural ties to the land of their parents and grandparents. My personal perspective as a black American in New York, it was much more common to meet somebody who identified as Caribbean or African before you met someone else who was just regular old black American in New York City, a city in the United States of America. So how many of those people weren't actually appropriating anything? How many of those people were actually African or West Indian or practicers of religions like Santeria? How, so how many of those people can you count for sure were actually Black American? The article starts off with just a very big gaping hole in cultural understanding of the makeup of black in America. Black in America is no longer by large or by far, especially in major cities and major pockets in America, is no longer descendants of slate of black slaves brought over in the 19th century. And for somebody to attack black people in America as simply a monolith of culturally ignorant descendants of slaves who have no connection to Africa, which is in, in itself an entirely ignorant thought, which we'll get to in a minute, they're just wrong. Like, there's no other way to go about it. Like, this is so, it's just so ignorant that I'm kind of like, girl, you really had a ner the nerve to publish that without doing a quick Google search because Google.com could have enlightened homegirl a whole lot. And if you're going to accuse black Americans of appropriating, can, can you even point to what culture and ethnicity they are actually appropriating? Now, me wearing this dashiki, which was made for me by a lady from the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Cape Town, South Africa, you could say I'm appropriating because I am a descendant of black slaves in America. According to the article, her case for accusing black Americans of appropriating was that we are culturally unaware of the things that we're wearing. Now what I can tell you is that the dashiki originated somewhere between Senegal and Ghana. It's mostly attributed to Ghanaian culture. The fabric that I'm wearing is called Angelina. In order for your dashiki to be authentic, the fabric should be printed on double sides. Now, now let me ask you, how many of your fellow black people, no matter where in the African diaspora they are from, have you seen rocking a dashiki that looks more like this? 
This is not an authentic dashiki. You can tell because it's not printed on both sides. And as a matter of fact, the tag said it was made in Thailand. I bought this from a Nigerian shop in Delaware. Okay. Now, how many people wearing this, regardless of where in the African diaspora they identify with, can actually tell you the difference between what I'm wearing and what they're wearing? I promise you all sides of the African diaspora are culturally ignorant. I say this as a black American who happens to love culture with a capital C, who happens to be rather well read on a vast number of historical, cultural things, specifically dealing with West Africa. And I can tell you how annoying most people from West Africa would find what I just did. They don't particularly like when people know more about their culture than they do. And if we're gonna talk about black Americans appropriating African culture, then we should talk about Africans appropriating American culture. There is a thing called the transatlantic loop. And the reason why I think it's so easy to target black Americans in this cultural conversation when it comes to the African diaspora, whether we're accusing us of appropriating, whether we're accusing black Americans of not having a culture, whether we're accusing black Americans of just being lost people in general, is that when black people were brought over from Africa as slaves to the Americas and the West Indies, Africa was not colonized. So we're not necessarily lost because we are unaware or because we have no interest in our African roots. We're literally unable to say where ethnically we are from. Colonization didn't happen until the 1900s. You know, when the white man came to Africa and divided up the land amongst themselves, that's when African ethnicities of those lands were given a new nationality. So even your identifying as Ghanaian, Senegalese, Nigerian, isn't in that way some sort of loss of your own culture if you're gonna accuse us of losing culture? And I mean, I don't really take issue with anybody's pride in their culture. I actually find that to be a beautiful thing of black people in our diversity throughout the African diaspora. But for us to start pointing our fingers at each other in demeaning and demoralizing ways, I just don't see any productivity in that. You know, if you want to say, hey, we should all be more culturally aware, I don't think being culturally aware of Africa is simply a problem of black America. There are many people who come from Africa who come to America or Europe or anywhere in the Western world and because the idealization of capitalism, of materialism, of trying to succeed in the white supremacy society that most of us exist in, we lose a sense of ourselves and a sense of our culture. You can read any given Chinua book to understand this. It's been talked about ad nauseum with many of the African literati that came out of the 1950s and 60s. Again, what is so dismissive about this article is that Black America does have a very strong culture. Let's rid ourselves of this appropriating term and say has inspired in a transatlantic loop. Afro B, first president of Ghana and Nigeria, who were both members of Phi Beta Sigma and educated at Lincoln University. Also, Black American culture is what inspired Fela. You can watch the Fela documentary that's on Netflix where they talk about him coming to America and seeing James Brown and the I'm Black and I'm Proud movement and that influencing the politicization of his music. You can look at high life music that came out of Ghana. You, this is so many things that you could go on and on about and it's not that Black American culture has inspired more African culture than, it's like no, there has been a current forever and a day going on between the African diaspora throughout, whether you look at Santeria that has come out of a religion that comes out of Cuba and Brazil that's influenced by Yoruba culture and religion, whether you look out not to leave out the West Indies with Jamaican culture, which has a very strong tie to Ghana, or you look at how many of the civil rights leaders were direct descendants of the Caribbean, whether Marcus Garvey, who's actually a Jamaican. So I just want to behoove all my smart brown girls no matter what ethnicity they identify with, whether it's a singular, whether it's multiple, whether you have more national pride, whether you just identify as black and I'm proud and I'm beautiful, to be proud of who you are. And I think we should never be insular people who are only concerned with our small social circle and bubble. I think culture is such an inspirational thing. It provides so much context and history and understanding of how we interact with each other and there's just so much to learn from it that we should all embrace it on some level hopefully some of us can communicate to her why that article was problematic and she can learn from it and you know don't hang it over her head she's 
a cute girl. I hope she flourishes. She has a YouTube channel. If you're interested in black girls in Thailand, you should go watch it. And I really hope that, you know, she kind of <clears throat> uh, learns about the value of research before penning her next article, questioning or attacking another demographic of black people. And I say this with all the love and awareness that I could have in my heart. That's not shade, girl. It's just factual. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hopefully we keep this peaceful and not boastful, please. My last video with Evelyn from the internet is about Africans and African Americans, girl. 3,000 comments later, people are still trying to rewrite history to make their ethnicity the end-all be-all of mankind. I penned an article for TheRoot.com. It'll be linked down below. If it's not published by the time I put this video up, I'll check back later and I'll leave a comment down below as well. So thank you for supporting. Stay blessed and unbothered and black and beautiful. I'm proud of our diversity. That's why I called it the Smart Brown Girl Movement.